This is David, WE901. We have the Raspberry Pi 4 here. It is connected to the RTL-SDR.com version 3 SDR dongle through the USB interface. We've got a terminal up here. In the terminal we're going to check out and we'll go through history and find RTL underscore test dash s that's a sample rate and we're going to sample the rate just slightly more than one million this number is precise and it should be a number that the sample rate is supported by the SDR device I hit enter it found the device and this device is zero it goes down the RTL is 28 32 U and the tuner chip that's used in front of it is an R820 T. Here are the gain values that are supported by the tuner chip. The key number here is the sample rate. Notice that's the same number that we put in 1024 000. And what it's doing is it's testing the data rate between the SDR device and the computer. So we lost about 100 bytes, exactly 100 bytes at the beginning, and haven't lost anything since. That's a good sign. We will use this number in GNU Radio to set the sample rate of our first lab. Control C, we'll stop it. And here we have samples per million lost, zero. So even though we lost 100 bytes, if you uh, collect all the millions of samples we collected, it turns out to be uh, zero. So that's done and checked. We'll go ahead and close this. We're going to start GNU Radio. It's under Programming. GNU Radio Companion is a graphical programming environment. It generates Python code script. The Python code script calls C++ routines. So here's our desktop here. And for example, this will use the Qt graphical user interface. We'll leave that as is. But here's the variable sample rate. We want to change that. We double click on that. And we're going to change that to 1024. And of course, there's three zeros behind it, slightly more than a million. We say OK. Next, we need some blocks. First block is how to interface to the SDR device. So we've loaded that in a software YouTube video. And here we're going to find the source called O S M O C O M. I'm going to drag that block over onto our workspace. And we're going to see that we have a variety of parameters. We're going to leave all of them the default except frequency. Now, my favorite radio station to test things on is an FM station. And that FM station is 103.3. It's a 95 kilowatt FM station here in Portland, Oregon. So I'm going to enter that frequency in. You would enter in whatever FM station that uh, you find that's powerful. And we'll say OK. Next, this is going to collect the data from the USB device and the output is a series of complex numbers in phase and out of phase real or imaginary and uh, we're going to have that streaming data and what we're going to do with that streaming data we're going to take it to an instrument so we move back up here until we find an instrument and there again we're working with the QT interface that's up here in the corner and we're just going to take the sync. And we're going to grab that sync. And you notice we can grab and position. 
Now, notice that the blue square here, that's a data output. The blue square here is a data input. I click on once on the output, click once on the input, and a wire appears. So we are done programming. What we're going to do now is take this graphical diagram and compile it into Python code, which we'll call C++ code. And we do that with this little icon here is generate flow graph. Now it's nice enough to say, ah, I want to save it. So I've created a directory, GRC, GNU Radio Companion. So let's call this lab1, enter. So now that we've got the, notice that lab1 is now up on the top. It's got a extension GRC, GNU Radio Companion. Okay, it says uh, it's generated the block. Here's the block of code. It's the Python code that calls the CCC++ routines. Now, the run here is this little triangle. So we'll go ahead and hit the ex execute. And you watch all the things that are going to happen, finding the USB device, connecting to it. And now we're going to drag. Our graphical flow chart. So at zero is 103.3. That's the FM station. Here's the FM and its sidebands. FM channels in the United States are 200 kC apart. Minus 200 kC, we're still in the sideband of this one station. Minus 400. That's another FM station. Plus 400 is another FM station. We see three FM stations here, in which KKCW, which is 103.3, is the strongest station. Now we're going to go to, oh, this is the strength and signal strength. So you can see how strong this is. This is minus 20 in reference in decimals and the other stations are down here at a minus 60. So a difference of um, 10 dB is a factor of 10. A factor of 20 dB is a factor of 100. So 20 to 60 is 40 dB. That's 10,000. So this is 10,000 more strong than about here, right here at the top here. So this logarithmic scale is important to understand in radio work. Now let's go and look at the waterfall. What we're going to do is we're going to take this spectrum and we're going to see how it changes over time. Now a lot of waterfalls can be in different directions. This one goes up, some go down, hence the word waterfall is the ones that go down. Some go to the right side and so forth. So again, what we have is a indication of the signal strength. Now we're going to do an auto scale here. And the auto scale will help see the dark areas is noise. The lighter the signal is the signal that's minus 400 kc. Here's the one that's plus 400 kc. And of course our very strong signal is even into red indicating it's very strong. And then the sidebands are less strong as indicated by the lighter color. Next one we're going to look at time. The output of our device is two numbers. Those two numbers are going to be real and imaginary. Real is also in phase data. Imaginary is quadrature data. This block here interfaces to the USB device that has a quadrature demodulator. 
the stream of two numbers are coming out and what we're doing is we're plotting those numbers versus time here with the amplitude. Notice the numbers go both positive and negative. The maximum will be a positive 1. The most negative is a minus 1. So we're doing good. We're not clipping the number. The number's not uh, saturated, so we're not losing data. This is very important not to overdrive and clip your data. So this is an example of two graphs representing the two numbers that make up a single signal that's changing in analog and time at our receiver. Now we can take these numbers, real and imaginary, and rearrange them. So the real number is called in phase this case. Notice it goes minus 1 and 2 plus 1. And the quadrature goes from minus 1 to plus 1. And this is what the imaginary axis would be. Notice that it's going in a circle. And what's happening is, is that the signal literally is going around and around and around. And every time we sample it, which is one of these round dots, we're saying what's its position and where it's located. If this was a perfectly clean FM, state, FM signal by itself, it would be a perfectly round circle that the dots would be on. If the dots are sampled high enough, it would be filled in and we would see a complete circle. If the dots don't sample high enough, we would see gaps between the indicator and the sampling. So with that, we'll go ahead and stop things. We hit the little stop sign here. So what we've learned. Key value is the sample rate. We want to match that to our hardware. We get set the frequency that we would want our hardware to be at. Our hardware is going to deliver our computer a stream of numbers. In phase, out of phase, in other words, quadrature, which is Q, and in phase, I, so it's called IQ. Some people refer to real and imaginary. These two sets of numbers can go to a sync, and this sync works with the QT graphical interface to produce four different windows. So this is our first experiment showing what GNU Radio can do and we'll do future experiments as time permits. This is David W A 9 O N Y 73 and QRT.